All right, I wanted to show you a bit of how our calculator can be used to very quickly get us some information about a data set. I'm using an emulator here. Hello. I wanted to show you how our calculator can be used to get some information very quickly about a data set. All the steps I'm going to take with this data set aren't needed for every problem, but this can still be fairly helpful. I'm going to power on my calculator. And first of all, one of the best things to do frequently with your calculator is to hit the second button and then the plus for the memory feature, to hit 7 to reset, hit 1 for all RAM, hit 2 to agree, and this will clear absolutely everything and will put your calculator back into the factory default fresh settings. I tend to do this about 60 times a day when I'm trying to play around with numbers with students. And more often than not, if your numbers aren't matching the book numbers and it seems like you're following all the directions, it's quite possibly because there's something going wrong with a setting somewhere. So go ahead and reset. It's nice because it clears out all the lists and it gets rid of any old data. So this try it here on page uh, 111 has some information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the stat button on the calculator. And I'm going to hit 1 to get into that edit list. And then I'm going to enter these numbers here. These numbers are coming here in a raw list. And so I can enter them one at a time. 21 and enter. 21 again and enter. 22. I could also enter them as a frequency distribution, and we'll do that again in a second, because I want you to see both options. So I've got 22, 23, and this will take a little bit of time, but not too bad. I have to admit I'm a lot faster when I don't have to use an emulator, because I'm pretty bad at clicking here with my mouse. In real life, I tend to use a number set um, program usually R or something like that. And I'm really fast at using the number keybat, keypad on my keyboard. I think I've managed to enter 29 twice. 31. Normally I think you're supposed to delete these out of the videos, but I don't think I will just because if I can do it clicking on these things, I'm up to 34, 35 I need to do then I think that it's very doable on a real-world calculator. I have 436's to enter here. Anytime I see a lot of numbers entered all in a row that are the same number, I think maybe I should have done this as a frequency distribution. The number 38 showing up three times here. And finally 40. All right, if I scroll up one, I can see here on my list that there's 25 elements of our list. And if I count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So I feel pretty confident I've entered the correct things into the list. This asks us to simply use our calculator to find mean and standard deviation. But we're going to do a little bit more than that. So if you go ahead and click on stats once again, and this time we're going to move over using our arrow key here on the right arrow to calculation, and I'm going to hit 1 for one variable stats. And I'm just going to hit enter, and it will automatically look in list 1 for me. I could also click second in list 1, but I don't need to. Now we have a set of statistical summaries of our data. X bar, which we sometimes call mu, depending on whether it's a sample or population data set, is 30.68. We'll use some of these numbers in a bit, but here we have on a baseball team the age of these players. It asks us to find mean and standard deviation, and so here is our sample deviation. This x bar, of course, was our mean, and here's our population deviation. Notice these two numbers are different. I'm going to go ahead and say that these 25 players represent a sample of baseball players in general. I honestly have no idea how many people are on a baseball team. I know that in Twilight the Cullens only had a few on their team and they called it the American pastime, but I don't know that these 25 people would I expect to be a population. So I think I would probably go with 
sx and talk about 6.09 if I wanted to round to a couple of decimal places. If I continue to scroll down, you'll see some additional information here in terms of what the min was, where the quartile cutoffs were, and where the median, and of course the max. Now all this data in list one is what we also need, and all of this information here is what is used to create a box plot with whiskers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just so we can kind of visualize this. I'll hit second and stat plot, and then I'll hit one. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to turn this plot to on. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to scroll to that fifth term here, which is the box and whisker plot, and I'm going to hit enter. And my list is in list one, so I'm going to leave that as my X list, and my frequency is one because I've entered in every one of these 25 numbers manually by hand. Next, I'm going to click on Window and select my Window button. And depending on your version of TI, this may be a virtual button, but here it's an actual button on this one. My X values are these raw data here, 21 through 40. So my X min, I'm going to make a 20. And my X max, I'm going to make a 41. And I think that'll probably get me into the right viewing pane, possibly. And so from there, then I'm just going to hit trace. And here is my box plot. And if I click left a couple times, it'll show you the min there. If I click right, here will be that first quartile number. And notice this is a calculated value, 24.5. doesn't show up on this list. If I click right, and that'll show you the median, that number right there in the middle. If I click one more right, I'll have the third quartile cut off of 36, and finally the max there at 40. And so this gives me a box plot. Now, we had entered each of these numbers by hand. Let's go ahead and reset all of our memory. Hit 2 there to reset. And I'll go back into stats, and I'm going to go back into edit, but this time, in list 1, I'm going to go ahead and just enter a number once when it shows up. So 21 shows up twice, I'll only enter it once. Then I've got 22, and I have 23, 24, 25 also showed up there. Then we skip a bit because I think we've got 28 and 29. And then we also have 31, 32. 33 and 34, 35 and 36. Notice we're just entering each of these once, then 38 and 40. So since I've only entered them once, I've only had to enter 15 numbers. Then I'm going to scroll right into list 2. And notice I'm back here at the top. And the number 21 has shown up twice, so I'll put in a frequency of 2. And the number 22 has shown up once, and 23 showed up once, and 24 has showed up twice. Same thing with 25, it looks like. 28 and once, and 29 is twice. So we're just entering in list two the frequency. 31 is showing up once, 32 once, 33 shows up twice. 34 is once, 35 is once, 36 is three times, no, one, two, three, four times. That sounds familiar. And 38 is twice, and 40 is once. Now here, this didn't really save me time, I don't think, because I had to enter in 30 numbers altogether, and there's only 25 raw numbers, so I don't know how much helpful this was, but we did it all the same. What you want to notice is that if I hit the stats button and once again scroll one over to stats and then hit one for one variable stats and now if I hit second and one for list one and then type the comma button there above number seven and hit second two for list two and then hit enter I'll have the same one variable stats that I had before my memory serves. Hmm, I don't quite have the same one variable stats, and it looks like I only have 24 in my end, so I must have made a mistake. 38, 
3D8 shows up three times. I simply can't read without my glasses, folks. Um, let me see here. So I have now once again hit stats, and I've scrolled over to my calculation. I've hit one for one variable stats. Second L1, comma, second two for L2, and now hit enter. And this time, the numbers will be perfectly matching right down to that median of 32, which I recalled from last time. Notice also, if I was to hit second and stat plot, again go into that first option there and turn this on, and then select the box plot. Notice here where it says frequency, I would go ahead and hit second and L2, and this would give me the list 2 as my frequency. And that way when I went ahead and hit trace, so that I could see, probably if I select a good window here, I can go and pick something like 20 as my x min, and maybe 41 as my x max, and then hit trace. I'll be able to see the same plot. Notice here it's telling me this was happening in list 1 and list 2, and it will give me the same box and whisker plot as I had before. Before I let you go, one more thing I want to show you with these lists. If I go back into stat and hit 1, this is of course a frequency list, and sometimes we talked about relative frequency. Remember, relative frequency was what we would get if I took this 2 and divided it by the total head count, which in this case was 25. Now that I counted that several times. If I scroll over into list 3 and go up 1 into the name for list 3 here, and if I was to then hit second list 2, and then type in divide, and then type in the number 25 and hit enter, notice something very cool shows up here in list 3. What it does is it takes each of the numbers in list 2 and divides it by 25, and it is now showing you the frequency variable there. And if I wanted to get a, re or excuse me, the relative frequency. And so if I wanted to then get a relative frequency histogram for this, I could go ahead into stats plot and select one. It's already on, so I can just go ahead and pick a histogram. And the list is now L1. And if I want a relative frequency histogram, I'll code it to use list 3 by hitting second and 3. And then in my window, I'll probably set my window view to be something along the lines of 20 and 41 for the x values. But since we've done a relative frequency histogram, it would probably be pretty good to go ahead and code up the y minimum to just be something like negative 0.5 and the y maximum to be something like 1.2. If I wanted to, I could choose my number of bins here. We've got data values from 40 all the way to 21. So this would tell me my total length, possibly called the spread. And then if I choose divide here, now I can choose how many bins I want this to go into. And we could choose as many as we wanted. I think a general rule of thumb is somewhere between 5 and 15. I think maybe our book mentioned something along those lines before. We've been using 6 quite a bit, but let's say I just decide to go with 5. That will give me that x scale there. I can go ahead and hit graph, and we can see a view of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different pieces here. Maybe getting a little bit more of a zoom out on the window might not be too bad. So possibly I can go ahead here because it looks like none of these were very high. Let's try a Y max of 0.5 there. Now I can see what a histogram might look like for these values. So the main things that we did is we used our lists, including we used the list command over here in L3 of typing in second L2 and then dividing by that head count of 25 and that populated us a relative frequency histogram list and we did a couple other things with the calculator as well including being able to look at our statistics and being able to get some very interesting stats for L1 comma L2 and then we were able to get means and standard deviations of either sample or po sample deviations or population deviations and of course some of those five figure summaries show up in a box in this all right i hope this was helpful have a good evening